Okay, uh, so I've talked about field site settings for field courses. Uh, what I'll cover will be applicable both for compound and for recurve. Uh, maybe a little bit more specific for compound because of yourselves here. Uh, what I'll cover, uh, I've got on a, a summary but on a couple of pages, and that couple of pages um, Pat has. And that, that'll give you the gist of what we're doing. More than that. So if we look at a field course, um, what do we know? We know that some of the targets, you, you know the distance, uh, and some of the targets, you don't know the distance. Now they have site settings, we need to know two things. We've got to know the distance, and we've got to know the slope. Now the, if you look at the, uh, the rules of the field out of world archery, um, there are some quite specific ones in relation to both of those. Uh, the first one is you're not allowed to have a device to measure the distance or the slope. Um, the rules actually say you're not allowed to use bits of your boat or other equipment to measure them either. Uh, but if you look at, for example, the World Archery Level 2 coaching course, they actually tell you how to do it. They tell you how to work out what the distance is. And uh, so every, every one at the top level where, where it's an un, uh, unmarked distance, everyone uses triangulation. They just use the size of the scope or some other part of the bow compared to the target. Now, what the World Archery says basically is they, they know everyone does that. Please just don't do it blatantly, obviously. And they just accept everyone's going to do it. So that, that deals with distance. And in my experience, you'll find that the top archers uh, will know the distance to within one metre. Uh, so from the point of view of the top archers, they might just as well mark all the distances, because all the archers will know them. Uh, the other one is the slopes. Again, you're not allowed to have a device uh, that measures the slope directly, you're not allowed to carry out a rangefinder that measures slopes. Uh, and again, the, the rules book says you're not supposed to use your equipment to do such things, but again, uh, World Archery knows everyone does. So they accept that people will do it. So you then got to say, we're going to talk about slopes. What resources have we got that tell us what the slope is? Well, there are a few, few, real, few real easy ones. Uh, for example, if I hold my, my fist out at, 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 at arm length, I know that that covers seven degrees. So that's easy. That's easy. Now what else have we got? Compound bar, of course, you've got a bubble level. That's pretty handy. You've um, got limb pockets. Yeah, another one you've got <laughs> is, that, that will tell you vertical. Uh, one of the things that affects not so much the compounders but the recurvers, if you're shooting across a slope, uh, the recurvers will hold the bow at an angle and they go off to the side. The arrows look like they're going downhill. So if I'm shooting particularly recurve, sometimes compound, I'll just hold an arrow up and say, what's vertical? Where, where is vertical? And so for recurve, for example, if once I know where it's vertical, I'll hold my bow window in line with that vertical of something on the target or around the target that's vertical. So that's easy. Another one that's easy is pretty much every site, that, that angle is 30 degrees. Uh, so it's easy enough to hold your compound bow sideways, put the bubble in the middle, just look over that slope and say, is it you know, greater than less than 30 degrees? That's easy. Yeah, it is. Particularly compound bow, a bit hard to recoup because you've got, got no bubble. <coughs> but yeah, climbing vertical is easy. So 30 degrees, and so you just hold the bow like that so the bubble's in the bubble centred, and you just look straight over that, that edge and tell you it's 30 degrees straight away. Immediately you know whether it's greater than 30, less than 30, 30. Easy. The next thing you've got to know is what sort of range of angles that you might get. Um, I've just had a look at the slope outside the door here, going you know, from the concrete down to the, the next level. Um, that's pretty steep. That's around 40 degrees or a bit more. Now do you get targets that steep on a field course? I've shot um, three World Field <coughs> Championships uh, and uh, World Field Championships you can certainly get targets that steep. I've shot 
um, up a bit over 40 degrees on a World Field Championship. Uh, usually the courses around Australia you don't get that steep. The next big field tournament in Australia is the, uh, the field tournament in Geelong. Uh, you can get some steep targets there. You certainly get a lot of targets at Geelong that are at least 20 degrees. Uh, you get some that are a bit more than 20 degrees. For example, Geelong has a, I think it's a 10 metre or 15 metre target and it's, it's that sort of angle. So it's, uh, it's certainly at least 30 degrees, probably more than 30 degrees. So what we need to know in, in our site settings for field is what site setting do we use for angles up to at least 30 degrees, uh, both uphill and downhill. So 40 degrees of mix is, is unusual. So if we can cope with up to 30 degrees, uh, almost all circumstances you'll cope with. For example, if you should, my uh, field course at my club at Sherbrooke in, in Victoria, uh, the biggest angle is about 20 degrees. Okay, so that's the sort of range we've got to deal with. Uh, but both uphill and downhill. Now, um, how do we best go about that? Um, one, one of the first things we can say is that if we use the site settings that we would use out on the target range, uh, yes, you'll hit the target, uh, but on a, on a flat course you might score pretty well. Uh, but on a, a course that's got slopes on it, you won't score very well. You'll hit the target close, uh, but you simply won't score enough. Um, but what we've got to have is a process that says, uh, up to, say, for compounders, up to about 30 degrees up, 30 degrees down. We've got to have a process that gets us accurate enough our site setting so that we can hit the gold, hit the five or six ring. That's, that's how accurate we have to be. Now, next thing I'd like to do is to talk about um, site settings and uh, how they work. So if we take distance uh, from you know, zero out to yeah out, out to lots, you know, say something like 100, <laughs> long way out, and up, up here, I'm going to say how high is the the site above the arrow? You got the line of the arrow. How high is the site above the line of the arrow? So if we're shooting a big long distance, the sight pin's going to be down low. And as we go closer, the sight pin comes up. Happy with that? So if we go out to a big long distance, our sight setting, our sight might be, might be down here. As we come closer, the sight goes up the sight bar. And it keeps going up the sight bar until we get down to very close. And then, it goes down again. And it goes down again because um, your eye is not at the, the level of the knock of the arrow, it's above it, so we get a parallax that, that pushes it down. Now, for a compound, that, that distance will be about, uh, about 12 to 13 metres for a compound. And it will, for a recurve, it will be about 9 to 10 metres. So it's a little bit closer in for a recurve. And that's just simply because the arrow speed's different. So if we were shooting 5 metres, say, our sight would be down here somewhere. Now, we then, if we then look at the the angle that we need when we're shooting up or downhill and turn that into sight settings. Um, that is the colours are right. If we, if we look at a, the sight settings that we need for um, shooting downhill, it, it's going to look exactly the same as that. It's going to be up here. So if we're shooting downhill, the sight's going a bit higher up the, the sight bar 
but it's going to have the same characteristic. We're shooting uphill. Um, it's the same sort of thing. Goes like that. So, in every circumstance, if you're shooting downhill, the red one, every circumstance, compound or recurve, the sight setting you need for shooting downhill, the sight is always higher up the bar than on flat ground. Every circumstance. Right. Even down here, so they're, they're higher up than the flat ground one. Every circumstance. Now, for, for recurve, the, uh, that is almost always true, but for, for recurve, we have a much slower arrow speed. Sometimes this blue one can, can get down here. So if we've got recurve shooting greater than about 50 metres and slopes that are only, uh, sorry, uphill, uphill up, up to no more than about 10 degrees, and big long targets, 50 metres or more, so this, this blue one will come down a bit lower than the, the one on the flat. So for, for recurve, almost always you've got to raise your sight, except for that one, one difference, very, very small uphill angles at very long distances. Other than that, in every circumstance, the, the sight setting for uphill and for downhill is higher up the sight bar than for shooting on the flat. Happy with that? Now, there is one method that people use to uh, work out a sight setting for shooting on slopes, and that is they take the horizontal distance to the target. So if you're shooting like this, the target down there, you say, how far is it out horizontally? You set the sight to that distance. That's one method that, that is used, and that's, that's a method that some of the rangefinders will tell you. Now, you say, what sight setting does that give you? What it gives you is this line. It gives you that. And what that's doing is saying, out at big long distances, it's giving you uh, somewhere in between the actual settings for uphill and downhill. So it's only a guess. There's only approximation to those ones. But you see it goes very wrong here. A very short target, that gives you a very wrong answer. So that's not, not a good method. So for example, if you were shooting a, let's say a, a 10 metre target, uh, and it's steeply downhill, you might say we, we set the sight by this method to the horizontal distance. You might say instead of setting it to 10 metres, we set it to 5 metres. Well then you'd be setting the sight down here, but actually the setting you need is actually up here. Right, so that, that method gives you a very wrong answer. So if you're setting it to the horizontal distance to the target, what it means is these, these short targets, you, you're going to go high. And on the long ones, for the downhill shots, you're going to go, um, you're going to go high, and the uphill ones, you're going to go low. Right, so that's not a good method. So what we need then is a, is a method that tells us those, those blue and the red ones, uphill and downhill, much more accurately. Now, there are, there are ways to do that. And uh, what I'd like to do there is I'd like to split it into two parts. I'd like to say that there are, there are distances that are a long way, and the distances that are around this thing where the site starts going down again. And uh, what I'd like to say, let's, let's make that 25 metres. So I'll talk about it in two parts. To say all the distances are 25 metres and longer, and all the distances that are real close. And we deal with them differently. Okay, now the one way we can think about it is if, so we've got down here at a, let's say we've got a, a 50 metre target, 50 metres. And we can say that our normal sight setting would be here. 
But the setting we need for 50 metres downhill is this one. All right. Now what we can say is, that's where we, what, did, what equivalent distance do we set on our site? The 50 metres on this, this, this slope of downhill. That, that, that we might call a, a cut. So how many metres are we taking off here, off the target distance to set our site? So instead of setting our, we're setting our site to 50 metres, we've set it to something, uh, something shorter than that. So for example, we've got as a target at the Geelong course, but, but sometimes they have it set at 50 metres and it's shooting down like this. So do we set our site at, if we take off say three metres, set our site at 47 metres? So we're learning about the cut. That's what I'm learning, this, this cut. How many metres do we take off the, the mark distance to get the distance we set our site to? Happy with that? Mm -hmm. So what, what we're actually doing is saying, this is the, this is the actual curve for, for that slope. So at this distance, we come across here and say so we set our site on the flat settings to, to that distance. So that's the cut distance. All right, happy with that? What I'd like to then do is to now talk about the cut distance in this part of the, part of the site settings. So we'll come to this one, we'll come to this one later, the short distances later. We have to deal with them differently. So I'd like then to drop all this off. Again, we talk about distance, and here it's the, the cut. All right. Now, what I'll do here is talk about a specific slope. So let's say we've got a slope of 20 degrees. It could be 20 degrees up, 20 degrees down. We'll talk about both of those. So first, we'll talk about the, that cut distance when we're shooting downhill. And when we're shooting here, 25 metres out to 60 metres. And what you find that that looks like, and here we'll talk, say we talk 20 degrees uh, of slope. What that cut distance looks like for downhill is a thing that is a curve that goes like that. Actually, and uh, we talk about the uphill cut, the cut is different, and it's sort of, actually, that one blue. It's more like that. So a, a real handy thing is that this uphill one, you see it's very flat, what that means is that if we've got a, an uphill, 20 degrees say, we can always use the same cut, always take off the same number of metres, and that will be very close. Happy with that? So as soon as we get uphill 20 metres, we can say, always, don't care what the distance is, we, whatever the distance is, we take off a, a fixed amount, of, and we'll, it, it'll be right. Happy with that? That's nice and easy. The downhill one, you see it's not, it's not flat, it's tilted. So we can't use the same rule there. But you see it's, it's reasonably straight. Reasonably straight. So that means we can have a, a relatively simple rule. All right. So what I, what I then do is to say, Given that's what the cuts look like in reality, let's have a look at what is that simple rule. Losing our water. So let's say the slope, and we'll say uphill. 
and we'll go 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees. And I'm talking now compound. There's a, you can do exactly the same thing for recurve, and a, a bit of paper tells you how to do both. So for, it varies a little bit in relation to your arrow split, a little bit in relation to uh, the type of arrows, but broadly it'll come out like this. So if the 10 degrees slope, 10 degrees is it's not much. Remember that we've said that that's seven degrees, so it's a little bit more than a fist. 10 degrees, so it's a, it's a gentle slope. 10 degrees, we take off 0.4 metres. That's pretty easy, isn't it? So whether it be 25 metres or 60, it's just half a metre. Yep, uh, that's right, half a metre. Take off half a metre. So you basically go to any, any target distance, 25 metres and greater, take off half a metre. And you're going to be in the gold. Then we go to 20 degrees. Take off 2.2 metres. So 20 degrees, shooting up like this. Take off a couple of metres. Now I've said 2.2, but I'd just take off 2 metres. So what you remember is 10 degrees uphill, take off half a metre, 20 degrees uphill, take off 2 metres. And you're going to be in the goal. 30 degrees. Take off 5.3 metres. Now the general rule there would be just take off 5 metres. That's easy, I think. Do you think that's easy? I think it's easy. Well, I'll try to remember it. <laughs> you, know, you only have to remember those three numbers. Or you can say half, two, five. So don't worry about taking notes on this because that it's sheet that Jim's here. holding is with us in the shop and we're able to send it out to you guys. So if you need it emailed to you, you can get this whole lot of information as well as the video sent through. All right, so does that deal with uphill? Yeah. So in my mind, for the diagram that you drew before where your uphill was very linear. Yeah, very flat. Very flat. That to me looks like it's a slight progressive curve. Uh, no, that, that's, changing, that's changing the slope. The other one was for a fixed slope. Fixed slope. Ah, okay, you're right. Because, of, because of, for a fixed slope, that, that, that yeah. line, that cut is very flat, we can say just a, a very simple rule. No, all right, thank you. That's about as simple as you could get it. And I say that rule will get you in the gold. All right, now we've got to deal with downhill. Downhill a little bit more complicated. What would it be for your 40, 40 degrees? Uh, I, can, I can show you that too. Uh, 40 degrees, the, the rule gets a little bit more complicated because you're, you're getting a little bit more out of where the, the things are linear. I can shape it. Now we do downhill. And we're going to do downhill with the same angles, because these are the angles you're going to get uh, on the pretty much any field course. Uh, so 10 degrees downhill, what the rule is, um, take off 1 44th the distance. Or approximately that. You say, well, yeah, 44th is a bit, yeah, if you shoot, if your target was exactly 44 metres, you just take off a metre and shoot 43 metres. 44th is a bit hard to remember. So, well, we take off. 2%. Just remember to take off, uh, you could just say 140th would be all right, or a uh, couple of percent. Yeah, two, two and a half, two, two or two and a half percent. Two percent. You're going to be in the middle. Uh, then we get 20 degrees and uh, take off 1 14th of the distance. So if you're shooting 20, 28 metres, 
when you raise it down, take a little notice. Now, now you say it's not, it's not as easy a calculation as the, the uphill. Again, you don't have to remember much. Um, 30 degrees. Take off uh, one seventh of the distance. Uh, plus one meter. So if you're 30, 35 meters, 30 degrees down, you take off five meters plus another meter, you take off six meters. Happy with that? That's a little bit more complicated. I'd like to have a real simple rule, but the yeah, fact is we can't have a, a real simple rule. That's as simple as you can get it. Happy with that? Again, it's a little bit to remember, uh, but uh, that one's complicated. Any questions about that one? Yeah, so you've really got to remember three numbers or a simple approximation to that. Uh, plus that one. So it's a little bit more complicated, but that will get you in the gold. Now, the other, so that's the uphill and downhill, the distance is more than, of 25 metres and more. We've got to deal with all those short ones. So what I'd like to do is to <coughs> go back to the other diagram. Here we are. There's something that went like that for our shooting on the flat. And we had for uphill and sorry, downhill and uphill. And now we're dealing with this bit. Now, the marvellous thing here, well, first thing to note is that these ones are always higher than you're sitting on the flat, always. You never sit your sight lower than you would on the flat. If I say, right, if you're 10 metres sitting on the flat, you never put your sight lower than a 10 metre target, you might put higher. This is saying that if it's an up or downhill, your sight's got to go up, otherwise you go higher. Now, a beauty, a beautiful thing is that the uphill and downhill, and this is a, a very almost almost touching each other on those two curves. I'll have to have drawn them separately, but in reality it would be more like be more like that. And that means that down here we can have one rule that does uphill and downhill. Happy with that? Now um, Again, what we're doing here for 20 metres and less. So all we need to remember is remembering that your site's got to be higher up the site bar than on the flat. So if we, if we know how, how much higher up it is, uh, that's all we need to remember. Then, if we come down shorter, say it, say we went down to ten metres. If we know, if we know, know how much higher it is at twenty metres, it's just half that at ten metres. So the thing we've got to remember is how how much higher do we put the site at twenty metres, and we've got everything. All right. So that's what I'll show you now. and we'll take 20 metres and so 10 degrees it's Let's. 
much come in. Uh, 20 degrees. Starting to get, starting to get important. And 30 degrees. What I'm saying is, we know at 20 metres, it must go up. Yeah? The site's got to be up higher for any slope, up or down. Cannot go down. If it goes down, it's wrong. And 20 metres, that's the change. So then we go to 10 metre targets, it's half that. That's a pretty easy rule. Like you, know, you can almost forget this one, you can almost say nothing. These ones matter. If we were to 40 degrees, and that can happen, uh, that comes out as 3.8 millimetres. Yeah, that's a lot. I've seen targets at, at that angle, and your sights to go way up. Never down, never ever down. Happy with that? So really you've got to all you've got to really remember is just that bit. And this bit's lots. All right. Have you, have you all of that? Now, there's a, so that's, that's all in that sheet, and all the recurve equivalent is in the sheet as well. Uh, there's, one other, there's one other tricky thing you can do. Um, how many of you are familiar with accurate sites? Lots. Look, I'll show you one coming here you can do accurate sites. My computer comes up. I'll have to walk around and show you a little bit. So this, this is the screen of accurate sites. So I'll turn it. Go, go. And I'll move it across. Um, I'll just put in here a, a set of compound settings. So now it's filled up one of my Bose compound settings. And it gives you the normal scale that you would stick on the side of your sight bar. Alright, but there's a, there's a little cunning bit here that you can, you can think it's called show slope, slope settings. And you can see it's added this little bit down there. Let me let me show you on the board how that works. I'll, I'll pass this round for people to have a look at. That's the two examples. Is accurate starts available on that? No, <laughs> not yet. So what we've got, accurate sites will print out a, a thing to sit on, stick on your site bar, and it'll give you all these things. All right, uh, that, that, and it'll, it'll print out that and give you a very accurate set of site settings. Now the, the other little bit that I brought up on it just then, is say if you want it to, you can, it'll print out a, a little thing that does this. That's not there. Did that wrong. Look at that little addition. You can see it when it comes around. Now, what that is, is downhill. And this one is 10 degrees, that one is 20 degrees, that one 30 degrees. So that. All of those calculations you've just been told are all just in a little sheet about <coughs> two inches by one inch. Yeah, now the, 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 that, that's just giving you the downhill. It gets awfully messy if I add the uphill on there as well. 
But the uphill, you remember, the uphill one's very easy to remember. The uphill one's trivial to remember. It's always the same, same amount that you take off for uh, a particular slope for any distance. This one, you see, these, these differ in size. So that's what that one's doing the downhill for you. Now, you've got to say, the trick then is to say, are you allowed to do that? Uh, what the rules say, in, uh, you read the World Archery rule book, the rule book says that you're allowed to have one set of sight settings. You're not allowed to have anything that tells you the distance or tells you the slope. Right? That does not tell you the distance and it does not tell you the slope. Those are just sight settings. They're very specific sight settings, but they're just sight settings. All right. So that's, that's a very important point. They're, they're not telling you how to guess the distance. They're not telling you the slope. So they're not doing, it's not doing things that you're not allowed to do. It's just sight settings, but very specific sight settings. Any questions about that? Uh, so aside from that, where I've done all the maths for you, you use those formulas that I showed you on the previous few, few boards. Any questions? I think I've covered what I wanted to cover. Thanks very much, Jim. Cheers.